In this new YouTube series, I dive deep into the life of Elon Musk, dissecting the experiences and challenges that shaped him into the innovator he is today. After thoroughly reading, analyzing, and reflecting upon his biography, I break down his life events to help you look into his mistakes so that you can avoid making them while you are running your own startups or working with your team. So let's begin. For the second time in three years, Musk had been pushed out of a company, mainly because of his rough personal style. Also, perhaps his vision of the company didn't align with the others. Let's look at a clip of this interview. What Elon has to say about PayPal. Well, if, if PayPal doesn't do something, it will be screwed. Yes. There has not uh, been a lot of innovation. No. In fact, if, if you look at the product plan that I wrote um, in 2000, uh, there's hardly any difference. In fact, it's, it's slightly worse than that. You've um, gone backwards. Yeah. Uh, I mean, PayPal should be where all the money is. Yeah. And it's not. It's definitely not. You could tell from the video that he disagreed upon where the company should go with the other. And what exactly was his vision? Elon said PayPal could easily be the World Bank if it could just find a way to convince customers to store their money there. Right now, millions use PayPal to transfer money. But if PayPal could find a way to convince people to use PayPal as a bank, it would become the world's largest bank practically overnight. So this was September year 2000. Not too long after his wedding, he decided to go on his honeymoon to Australia. And Peter Thiel and a lot of the other executives couldn't really stand Elon anymore. So they actually planned a coup so that Elon is no longer in charge. And when Elon found out about that, Peter Thiel warned the executive not to answer Musk's calls. He could be too persuasive or intimidating. But Red Hoffman, the chief operating officer, felt he owned Musk a conversation. Imagine you're on your way to honeymoon and suddenly you feel something was off because the order you give to your team to execute, they no longer listen to you and they even push back and challenge your decisions. And Hoffman knew Musk. He has reality rap powers where people get sucked into his vision, he says. Nevertheless, he decided to meet Musk for lunch. The lunch lasted three hours as Musk tried to persuade Hoffman. I took all of my money and put it into this company, so I should have the right to run it, Musk said. And Hoffman disagreed. I told him that I believe his vision of Superbank was toxic because we needed to focus on our payment service on eBay. And for the second time in three years, he got kicked out of the company. And if you look back on history that both Elon Musk and Steve Jobs have been into a similar situation because of the company has raised a lot of money and the shareholders, especially investors, they don't want someone that is essentially a loose cannon to run the company. They want someone to follow and execute the order in order to maximize the return of the investors, right? And in this case, Elon's vision was too grand too big and too long term for them. And exactly like Hoffman had made the case here, right? We should be focused on eBay, focus on what's in front of us right now. The World Bank or Superbank idea is way too grand, it's way too ahead of us. Let's focus on what we can do today. Again and again, that is Elon Musk a visionary? My answer is probably he is, but because of he so insists upon his vision, maybe sometimes it's hard for other people to work with him because he's so fixed on that idea and he must achieve that. So let's look a little bit more about his psychological journey. Biography described Elon as a street fighter, but he still have an unexpected ability to be realistic in defeat. And after he got kicked out of the company, he decided to move on. Elon asked Levinson, which is one of the coup leaders, why did you turn on me? And he's also one of the co-founder of the original company PayPal with Peter Thiel. And he said, I honestly believed it was the right thing to do. You were completely wrong. The company was about to die and I felt I had no other choice. Musk nodded. A few months later, they had dinner together in Palo Alto and Musk said, life is too short. Let's move on. And he did the same with Peter Thiel and the others. And we're going to jump right into the leadership principles. Two important takeaways here today. Leaders take risks. 
and quotes from the book. Entrepreneurs are usually not risk takers. They're risk mitigators. They don't thrive on risk. They never seek to amplify it. Instead, they try to figure out the controllable variables and minimizing their risk, such as Peter Thiel, but not Elon. He was really amplifying risk and burning the boat so we could never retreat from it. And they use Musk's McLaren crash as a metaphor, floor it to see how fast it goes, to push it so hard till the engine breaks, right? And this exactly leadership principle where how Elon Musk operates, we're going to show up again and again, later on when he runs Tesla, later on when he runs SpaceX, and the Falcon 1 engine, the Roadster, the Model S, and going to show up over and over again. And it's something for us to reflect upon, right? And Peter Thiel reflected and commented on this issue. But if crazy companies like SpaceX, Tesla work, that everybody thought couldn't possibly work, then you said to yourself, I think Elon understands something about risks that nobody else understand. A leadership principle number two is a Chinese saying. It's called Zai Xiang Du Li Neng Cheng Chuan, which is the literally translation is the prime, minist prime minister's belly can support a boat. It means that take the high road or rise above it. Because in the business world, especially, for example, if you work in VC or crypto or tech startup, the circle is very small and you never know what's going to happen years or decades later that you might run across the same people that you were beefing with in the past. So that's one side. Another side is that as driven, as motivated as you are, as such a visionary as you are, it is just always better and easier to not be an asshole and to move on, to forgive. And there's something actually much more powerful to forgive and to move on and then to hang on those little things and uh, try to get revenge down the line, right? So there you have it, the quick, straight to the point summary of Elon Musk, what happened to PayPal and why did he got kicked out of the company? And most importantly, the leadership principles, two very important ones, leader take risks and rise above and move past what other people did to you. So keep those in mind. I trust that you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe because new videos where I dive deep into the biography of Elon Musk. It's coming out every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. This is Jazzy. Thank you so much for watching.